we're, I'm going to, I've, this is one of the, the toughest presentations I've had to put together for a while because everyone's using different devices and um, trying to pin an email down into one particular way is really tough. So what I've done is just talked about email in general and about what it is and how to do it. They're just the starting points, just sending and receiving. Now, the buttons are going to be in different places. Your, your screens are going to be different, but essentially the things are the same. So what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll just crack on and we'll see, we'll have a chat at the end and we'll see what we can uh, sort of work out between us. Okay, There's, the internet is really good at finding out more detail. Um, uh, YouTube videos are really good. Okay, so. Huh? Okay, so welcome back to the Internet City. Now this picture is from a recent animation by Walt Disney about a video, go video game character and his, and his little friend who managed to get on the internet. And you can see this is sprawling and really busy and there's lots of things going on. Now, what we can see here, there's lots of buildings and each place has its own name, its own address. And we use that address in two different ways. So we've got the web address, which just lets us look at things and interact with things. And we have email addresses. Now, email addresses are a bit different, but let's talk about that messaging service across the city. Now, when uh, a letter gets put in the letterbox, if you're going to send it to, shall we say, just um, to the other side of London or to the uh, not far away, it doesn't travel far. It goes in the letterbox, it goes to a sorting office, and then it goes to another, um, a, another postman who will then give it uh, to the other person. If it goes across the country, you're finding a lot of sorting offices, maybe trains, maybe planes, maybe vans, all sorts of different ways, lots of in-between points and other sorting offices before it gets to that postman putting it through your letterbox. And this is exactly the same. It's exactly the same with email. There's lots of computers doing the jobs of postmen and sorting offices along the way. And you can see our little friends that I introduced the, uh, in the last video, well, the last presentation, um, uh, the Android uh, robot, the Apple iPad and the computer, they all can send and receive emails. All of these devices do that. And this adds this other layer of, um, shall we say, complexity that I have to try and get across. But the concepts are always the same. You're always looking at the same mailbox, but from different points. Now, when we talk about these addresses, this is a bit of a diagram. I, I found someone else doing something similar and I thought I'd use this to illustrate what an email address is, how it's composed and how a web address can be found in it as well. So you can see the at symbol and the name before it, in this case, it's my friend, is at some place on the internet. It can be .com. It can be .org, it can be .org UK, .co UK, .gov UK. All those different addresses at the end determine the type of organization or business or, shall we say, entity that you're trying to send to. And what we tend to do is we get a free email address from a service. So a lot of people get Gmail addresses, which would be gmail.com or yahoo.com or yahoo.co.uk, which is really awkward, <laughs> or Hotmail, or uh, Outlook. Lots of different, different names, but they all sort of go to a place. Right, jargon busting time, magic words. I'm going to read these through a little bit because there's a lot of writing and I don't expect everyone to read it straight away. Um, 
Yeah, email's been around since 1971. It's been a, it's been around a long time. So um, how we the the structure of it is basically comes from a business place. It's uh, it, the way that it's structured, and we'll be looking at that structure later on. An email client is an app on your device. So your device is a computer, a tablet, or a phone, and it sends and receives messages to and from a mail server, just like that postman and just like that sorting office. And the mail server is that sorting office generally where things go to. And this is what, how we, we set up these clients to actually talk to the mail servers. That's the sticky part that, sets up, that needs to be set up when you get your device. And you only need to do it once. And it's, it's why no one ever remembers. So then we're moving on to webmail, which is the bit where the web pages and email mix. So you get to see the contents of your mailbox in a web page. It's, it, I'm putting that in there because everyone gets confused with it. Um, you'll find Yahoo, Gmail, Outlook, Hotmail, all of the big mail services offer um, a web mail service. So it's something to be aware of because you may be doing it. I don't know what anyone's doing. So I'm just covering as many bases as I can. And then when you're sending a message, there's an attachment to be to potentially to be put on it. Um, you, it's just like when you're sending a letter and you put a photograph in there. Uh, this is the similar sort of uh, attitude. Uh, it can be anything. but there is a limitation uh, bearing in mind that uh, a document can be quite small a picture can be quite small again but uh, not as big um, a movie is a combination of images and sounds and that's going to be lots of information so you won't be able to send that in an email we also do what well, what also happens in email that we send links instead but that's something else. I'm, I'm not going to really go into that too much today. There's so much to talk about. Um, so when you uh, send an email, there's always got to be a subject. And I think I've got this list a little bit wrong, um, but never mind. Um, so then we have a mailing list. Now, um, a mailing list is an automated list that we can join quite often. I'll give you a, for instance, at the um, Irish and Lewisham Centre, there's a mailing list from their website that you can join that sends out regular newsletters. A lot of places have these and it's just a handy thing to have sometimes. It can be, a, it, it's not something that you want all the time. You can actually always opt out of a mailing list. We always be aware of that. Um, but a lot of community centres, a lot of organisations like to keep in touch with you and send these occasional messages out. And then we have spam, which is the other side of this. Um, you may be on a mailing list you're not really sure about. And um, basically, uh, spam is, comes from a Monty Python sketch. It's spam with everything. And it's just junk mail. And then you have an inbox. That's where your messages are displayed in a list. That tends to be what goes on. Okay, um, I'm going to move on. And uh, if you can send a message, you can reply to it. So sending and receiving are fine, but you can also reply to a message. It means you don't have to actually know the uh, email address. You're just replying to a message sent to you. And um, it creates a thread of conversation. So finding that reply button sometimes is a bit awkward. Uh, I made mention on this slide that people with Apple devices just get symbols in their mail program and it's a bit awkward. So I've given you an illustration there to have a look at. And I'm going to move on. Okay, now I'm going to be looking at at email structure now, but I'm going to be using three different instances and I'll explain each one a little. So this is from my Thunderbird 
app, which is email client. And I'm started to write an email and there's, it always starts with who it's going to. So let's have a look, there we go, who it's going to, and then what it's about. So if you're writing a message about um, saying, I've got some photos I'm sending, you can say holiday photos in there. You've also got an attachment button over here. On a computer, it means going to find the files on your device, uh, on your computer. And also, um, we'll be looking at the other aspects of tablets and phones in a minute, but this is about what you have to do on a computer. You have to go and look for the files first uh, after starting the email. It doesn't work the other way around. And then you can see at the moment it's grayed out because there's nothing there. But when everything is, we've got an, who it's going to and a subject and always put a subject, you click a send button. We've got other options here to check for spelling or save as a draft which means we can come back to this, but I don't want to get drawn into this too much, but um, let's just keep with the, 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 the things that are similar. So Gmail, now I'm talking, this is from the Gmail web page when you make a new email and you can see it's a lot different and uh, things are a little bit different uh, the, the way around, but you can see there's a lot of this, exactly the same things the recipients are the person who the message is going to. You can actually have more than one person. What the message is about. You've got a message area underneath. Oh, I've missed that out there. And you've also got a little paper clip where you can attach a picture or whatever from your device. So it's similar. Um, you'll be asked to go and look around your computer for that now this is through a web page if you've got a tablet or a phone gmail offer an app that does all of this anyway so um it's it, it's just to show you that the similarities are always there these are the consistent elements of an email and so moving to the ipad um who it's going to what the message is about a message area underneath and here we've got a little bit of text that it's added in already, like a signature, which is often, uh, we, we can change that. And then you can send it when you've, when you've finished all of your details. So work your way down from who it's going to, what the message is about, write your message, and then send it. Now, you may say to me at this point, Paul, what if I don't want to send it? Well, you've got a cancel button. And every single one of these options have a cancel button, but this also doesn't have an attachment. So this is a bit different on an on a, on a iPad or iPhone or an Android device. The, they work things a little bit differently and you can actually go the other way around. You choose an item to send and then it creates an email to send it. So it's like wrapping an envelope around the item. So these are the buttons you find on your devices to do that. Now, when you press one of these, it will give you a bunch of options, what, what you can do with them. So both the share buttons, for an, one is an Android, one is an Apple as indicated. But what happens is when you've actually selected a picture or selected an item in your device, it will give you an option to do a whole bunch of things. If you have WhatsApp, for example, installed, you can also send the, an image via WhatsApp, not just as an email. So these offer an avenue for you to share your files and things you've got on your devices with other people. It's, it's a little bit of an odd way around. It's the other way around rather than creating a message and then adding something. This is just, I want to, I want to send something. So this is how you share it. Okay. Now, talking about when you do email addresses, 
everything's got an at symbol in it, as we saw earlier. And I, I like to call these Elvis moments um, because it's an Elvis song, isn't it? Return sender, address unknown. And uh, yeah, I always sing badly there. But um, that is about when an email doesn't exist and you get it wrong. So it's just like the real world. It'll come back to you, um, theoretically. But in, on, a, on a computer, it doesn't know any difference. It's trying to send it to a place and it doesn't come, it'll come back. So this is called a bounce, bounced email or it bounces back to you. So alternatively, if, if it doesn't come back to you, then it's been sent to someone. Now, there are millions of email addresses and I've, I, I once had the occasion, I was selling, sending out um, images of family members that I'd been adjusting and digitizing and, and just sharing. And one of them, had, my, my, my dad had uh, given me an email address and I'd gotten it slightly wrong just slightly wrong. And it went to Australia. And um, some guy, after, after a, a couple of messages, he said, I really like your family photos. <laughs> I really like your family photos, but I think you've got the wrong address. So people can be nice, but it's always good to know and always double check what address you've got from someone um, when you've got it. Okay, now we're going to, this is sort of the, the scams and spams approach that everyone asks about, and I thought I'd put this in just to, just to talk about it to everyone first. Um, there's a lot of information about scams from banks and such. Um, they're generally done in a way just to get you to react. They're gen there's a lot with just a link that you press on, they quite often pretend to be from someone, but you can actually find out if they really are from the place that they, they show that they are. There's a, there's a sort of another layer to the email as well. Generally, if you're in doubt, delete it. In doubt, delete it. Always ask your friend or your person. You can write a new message and say, did you just send me an email? Don't ever reply. Don't ever reply. And what you can do, you find if it's, if it's legitimate, that person will go, oh yeah, I, I did, I get something wrong. I didn't really add any text or say who it was, who it was from. And I, I sent you an attachment of things. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but you've got to write something to indicate that you're really my friend. And we, we, we have shared experience to be able to call on. So spam, as I talked about before, that's just junk mail. Um, it's an old Monty Python joke about a cafe that serves spam with everything. I don't recall it and I don't know how funny it is, but basically this is a word that's stuck with everyone. Okay, I think that is all for today on this. There's a lot to talk about now. <laughs>